Hello and welcome to the Pit Post Game Show here from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. We are your hosts, Christopher Carter and Noah Hiles. I stayed back from Blacksburg. Noah made the trek all the way down there to see Pitt's thirty-eight to twenty-one drubbing at the hands of a one and three, now two and three Virginia Tech team that looked like it was just outclassing Pitt all night long. We're going to break down several elements of this loss and where Pitt stands in a minute. We just want to remind you, this show is brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh, where you can find over 500 beers available. Pitt fans might want to drink every single one of them with the way that this team looks right now. It's pretty It's pretty rough. Noah, you were there. What was the temperament of Pat Narduzzi after this game? I, I just I, we're, we're, we're chucking the structure of the show yeah. because – this has been such a terrible start to the season, and this, to me, might even be worse than the West Virginia loss. I don't know about all that. Like, I, It's hard to debate that, but to answer yeah. your question, this was the mo- – and I tweeted this. This is the most deflated I have ever seen Pat Narduzzi. Um, something that I think I admire about Pat Narduzzi is he just never seems to have an ounce of quit in him. Um, after a loss – he is a bit confrontational. He can get a little bit prickly. And uh, that just wasn't the case today for the first time. And, you know, we've talked to him after some ugly losses. There's been yeah. a whole bunch of them this year. There were some last year. And, you know, he'll, he'll be quick to point out the good. He'll be quick to defend his guys. But, I mean, this time it was just it, – it felt like a funeral. It really did. And this was a man who – he just he he had no answers. It, it was it was it was he looked dejected. He looked frustrated beyond words. Um, because you know no coach likes losing, and, and and this is a guy who's two years removed from winning this league, and right now his team looks like it's the worst team in the ACC. Yep. Or pretty darn close to it. So he was he was in a different type of mood than I've ever seen him. Very sad. Um, the players had little or to nothing to say, and you can expect that. But overall, I mean, th- this is a new low for pit football in the Pat Narduzzi era. He even admitted that this is this is the greatest challenge he has faced in his head coaching career is getting his team out of this hole. And, and I, quite frankly, don't know how that happens. I'm right with you. I don't know how this happens. I, I wrote this in my analysis piece after the game. You know, we could point at Phil Dracovic as much as we want, and, and he deserves to be pointed at. I mean, he was not good in this game despite throwing two touchdowns and no interceptions and all that. Yeah. But this is a Pat Narduzzi team that even in its worst moments throughout his tenure, they they if, if they would still fight in the trenches, they would run the ball, they would stop the run. If you beat them, you were just throwing the ball all over them. This was a Virginia Tech team that came into this game ranking next to last in the ACC and stopping the run and running the ball. Virginia Tech held Pitt to 60 yards on the ground, the lowest it's allowed to anybody all season. Marshall ran for two over 200. Three of their first four, four opponents ran for over 200 yards this season, including Marshall and Old Dominion. And on the flip side, it ran for 199 yards. It's season high. And it, it just, it, there's no identity to this team. They can't run the ball, they can't tackle well. They can make big plays randomly. You know, I, I thought at the start of this game when Phil Dracovic hit that bomb, the bub means I'm like, maybe there's something here because that was the biggest thing that you and I have been saying this team yeah. would be missing was that deep ball. And I was like, okay, maybe Phil's found his confidence. It was literally his first throw of the game. And then everything after that was just a butt kicking at the hands of Virginia Tech. And again, I, I, I know Pat Narduzzi said that they're a good football team. And I'll tell you what, I know you could talk about this in, 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 in your next thing here. That looked like a ruckus environment. That 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 Virginia Tech atmosphere is impressive. But that team lost to Marshall, has been terrible all season. That is not a good football team by any standards and my measures. And Pitt should be ashamed to lose in the way that they lost to them, considering the talent that's on that roster. Yeah, that's this is not a good football team. It's right. only other win this year is over Old Dominion. Yeah. And it's by like I, I watched that game. Surprisingly enough, I gambled on it and lost. But uh, no, in all seriousness, I mean that's this that team was not good, and that was a close game down to the stretch. Old Dominion played them tougher than Pitt did, and that's it, like you just pointing these things out, Carter. I mean, Marshall ran the ball better against Virginia Tech than Pitt did. Duquesne threw the ball better against West Virginia than Pitt did, and and like these are alarming 
things. Alarming. And, and I think my biggest note, and this sounds so weird to say, but it's like Pitt's offense is so bad right now, it cannot do the few things that it typically does well. Exactly. It's so inefficient, it cannot even take the time to set up the run game. Because it, it it goes so poorly, so things get out of sync so quick, they don't have time to establish the run. Before they know it, they have to start throwing the ball because they're behind. Or because they're in these third and long scenarios because yep. of penalties yep. or because of anything else. It, they're, un, they're not able to get the run game going. They're not able to get the ball into their best player's hands. I've never seen something like this where – you can't find a way to get Gavin Bartholomew the football. You can't find a way to get Kanate Mumfield the football. And it's they're so bad at it. It's just like if it's not one thing, it's another. If 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 there is good protection, it's a bad throw. If there if there's protection breakdowns or there's a penalty, it's it's something everywhere. It's, it's the everywhere. biggest mess I've seen. And yes, Carter, you mentioned it was a rucking atmosphere. Guess what? That's college football. That's going to be that a lot of places. It. You know what? In a couple of weeks, this team's playing at Notre Dame. You know, like I, I don't, I don't buy into that. That's I, I asked because I knew we were going to get the whole spiel on the blocking not being great. And it wasn't great. They allowed four sacks. They allowed four more quarterback hurries. Some There some were times where Phil ran in into that pressure, yeah, though, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I know that. Um, but, like, it could have been better, especially against Virginia Tech. Right, uh, but, especially against Virginia Tech. But overall, yeah. I mean, I asked them again. I was like, well, is the blocking the reason this team took a delay a game call in the final four minutes? In between two full starts. And but is is the blo- is is the blocking the reason that you're taking the snap count down to five seconds when you're down by 17 points with three minutes left? Is the blocking the reason why you're huddling up? This is bigger than just the offensive line not working out or the receivers not having chemistry or Dracovic not being a good quarterback. This is a systemic failure. Yeah. From the top to the bottom. It's on our doozy for not putting the staff, the proper staff in place to make these decisions. It's on every offensive coach. Every offensive coach should feel a little warm in their seat right now. And that includes guys like Borbley and mm-hmm. and, and Salem who have been here for a while. And, and I don't expect those two guys to get fired. But, I mean, the other two, Underwood and, and Signetti, they came here in 2022. And, my goodness – uh, they're nice guys, but what are the receivers doing to justify them keeping him around? What are, what is the offense done to justify yeah. Signetti keep? It's 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 getting to a point where it is a systemic failure. They've failed to evaluate talent. They've failed to put a staff together, and so much needs to change. And I think that change is going to be coming here soon. When you say that change is going to be coming here soon. What do you think is on, is on the rise here for Pitt or on the next? Because they have a bye week coming up. They yeah. have time to reevaluate, and Pat said he would reevaluate. I don't know. I, it just – today felt like – today felt like the last straw. And maybe I'm over or reading into it too much. But, I mean, he was asked about – he was asked about Frank Signetti Jr. He was asked, obviously, about the quarterback. This quote stands out to me, though, and I tweeted it. It says – I'm going to reevaluate where we are. I see a lot of things that need to change on offense. We had nine first downs. It's hard to win a football game when you have two explosive plays, and that's all we got. We got to do. We got to look at what we're doing and how we're and, and look uh, look at what we're doing, how we're doing it, and fix it. That's my job as a head coach to fix it. It doesn't come down to one guy. It's everybody. It's a team loss. Period. This was a guy who a couple weeks ago talked about how. He was going to lean on his offensive staff. He was going to lean on Frank, was his direct quote, to make a change if it needed. I trust you'd run the offense. That trust, that quote right there shows that trust is gone. Yeah. So I'm not saying that Frank Signetti will be fired. Um, I don't know if that'll happen midseason or not. But there's going to be, at the very least, a change in the structure of power. 
If I had to bet moving forward, I don't think Pat Narduzzi is going to be spending 85% of his time with the defense in the film room, on the practice field, and all of that. This is a guy who I just think has hit his end, and he, he's going to start taking things over. He's going to make different decisions. I don't think any single starting position is safe. I don't think any single staff position is safe right now. I think everyone is currently in a spot heading into this bye week where they need to really prove themselves and prove why they deserve to continue to have the opportunity that they do with pit football. I agree with you entirely. I also think defensive staff shouldn't be yeah. out of this consideration e- either. And I'm not saying for fire. I'm not saying anyone should be fired yeah, on the no. defensive staff. But this was also an abysmal defensive performance. Missed it was. tackles everywhere. Guys out of position. Guys looking lost. And like you, like the first pl- the first pass of the game they gave up, we know Pitt's defense leaves the corner susceptible to get beat by default. That's, ki- that's kind of forgivable, right? What's not forgivable is the rest of the game where – Virginia Tech is just walking down the field in some of these drives and not by the typical old way of they were hitting on pass plays and just reading the isolation. They were missing to day on Hayes, missing a tackle when he has the quarterback locked up in the backfield and lets him you know, scoot out and get big yards. This is again, this is an indictment on everyone, every coach in the program right now on how poorly they came out. They did. They looked unprepared. They looked un, you know, unsynced. They, they didn't have anything going. And, you know, I made the, I was talking about the, you know, the lack of rushing offense to tell on Twitter, you know, during and a, a little bit after the game. And people were like, yeah, that's what happens when you don't have a passing game. And I said, no, go back and look to how they played Virginia Tech just last year. Right. Peter Slovis had less passing yards, less passing touchdowns than Phil Jakovic had in this game. And Izzy Labanacanda had the most rushing yards in pit history, broke a Tony Dorsett record with 320 yards and had six rushing touchdowns in that game. That This is bigger than anything like that. And I will also say, to be fair to Pitt's offensive line's players, they're missing Matt Gonsalves, they're missing Jake Cradle, they're missing Ryan Jacoby. Three key starters, absolutely a problem. But you expect your guys like Ryan Bear, who you've recruited, you've been very excited to see, to perform better than this, and you expect your offense to find a way to navigate its way around this against a bad team, an objectively bad team like Virginia Tech. That is why no one and I are, are talking. That's why we broke the structure of this show. We're not doing good, bad, and yeah. ugly. It's all ugly for Pitt right now. There's no other way to evaluate this. I have two final points that I want to make, and then I'm ready to wrap this up because i got to get back to my hotel <laughs> in Radford, Virginia, and Ooh. continue working for the night. Um, the first thing is, like you hit on with the Virginia Tech game um, last year, where they leaned on the run, even though – you know, the passing game was bad. How can you how can you run the ball when the passing game is bad? That offensive line was beat up too in that situation point. last year. Very good point. That was Branson Taylor's second career start. I believe Jake Cradle just moved to center that game because Owen Drexel yeah. was out. I mean, that that offensive line was out was without Gabe Hoy, Carter Warren, and Owen Drexel. You know, so yeah, sure. This team's without Cradle, Gonsalves, Jacoby. But they've had more time to prepare than the offensive line did last year. So I mean, that, that's just that's that's college football. Is I guess my tr- my point I'm trying to make is like Good point. you're going to be hurt. It's on you to figure it out, and they didn't. And yeah, of course they miss Israel Banacanda. Pat talked about that. My other thing I wanted to mention was we're a third of the way through this season, Carter, and. It's very common in uh, college sports, not like professional sports. You don't want to have a ton of ifs in in professional sports. Like, oh, if this guy does well and if that guy does well, if this position group performs well. But the reality is year in and year out, you're going to have that. And I don't care if you're Georgia, Pitt, Mount Union, or anybody else, you're going to have that just because there's so much roster turnover every year where you're going to say, okay, well, there's unproven spots on the field and we need to see some guys step up. And you figure good teams, you have probably 80% of the guys you need to step up will do it, and 20% they're failures. I don't know of more than maybe two or three guys this year who you could say are better than last year. Just going through their roster, I mean, yeah. Rodney Hammond Jr. is not having a better season this year than he was last year. And the guy was hurt yeah. for half the year last year. Mm-hmm. Mumfield looks better. Bartholomew looks better. 
I don't, I don't, I really don't know anyone on the defense. Maybe Dayon Hayes, just because he didn't play a lot last year. Donovan McMillan wasn't here last year. Yeah. But I mean, Devonshire looks like he's regressed. Uh, Marquez Williams, when you he he, he, he does he, look he, better. He's, yeah, he's but here. But he got I mean, hurt. None of the none of the nose tackles look like they've improved. The offensive line, even guys. Let's be real. Like a guy like Jake Cradle looked like he regressed before he got injured. Maybe the injury had something to do with that. I don't know. But it, you could just go through their roster, and, and it's really hard to find players who threw four, four games – no, five games this season. Yeah, five. They're one and four now. Yeah. It's really hard to find players who look better. Like, they're, they're, they're player, their team is not getting better. Their players are not getting better. And that's just – I don't know. Like this is like we said earlier, this is the worst spot this team has been in in the Pat Narduzzi era. When you end a game on fourth and twenty, and it's a check down for five yards to Gavin Bartholomew, it, it, I think that epitomized the level of quit in this team. And I know that Pat Narduzzi said that my team doesn't have any quit. I'm sure there were certain guys out there who were given an effort at the end of the game, but that looked like a quit football team, yeah, uh, not a pit football team. And that's the biggest problem here. He's Noah Hiles. Where I'm Chris Carter. We're both of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Find all of our content at post-gazette.com where you can find all of our reactions to this game. Noah's got the game story. I've got the analysis. Noah will have his points tomorrow. I'll have some film study out on Monday. Oh, not a lot of good to say either way there uh, for Pitt football. But you can find all that coverage and all the coverage for the Steelers game coming up this, this weekend uh, at post-gazette.com. And find this show here on all our PG Sports Now shows on YouTube and on your favorite podcasting platforms, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get them. We'll be back next – we'll be back – well, we'll be back later this week with our Pitt mailbag. Just on a bye week, what yeah. do they have to do to change it? We'll address then all your questions there right here on the, the PG Sports Now page. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Apple Podcast channel for more podcast content. Click below for a special deal of 99 cents for a three-month subscription to the Pittsburgh Post Gazette.